cloud. Okay, it's recording. All right, so I'm um, going to review some basic topics. So Molly um, and anyone who listens to this video will understand what I'm talking about. But I use an Ayurveda and integrative approach to um, to our health and to our overall health picture. And from an Ayurvedic perspective, when we enter the fall and winter months, there are two elements in nature that increase. And those elements are air and ether. So it's what's happening, it's considered that what's happening on the macrocosm is happening on the microcosm. So whatever's happening in nature is happening also within our bodies, which means that there are certain elements that increase. So our skin gets more dry. We can have a dry throat. Um, we um, we get tend to get more dehydrated. If you think about like in the air conditioning, you turn the, the heat on in the fall and then that heat dries out in the air. So you might wake up, you know, with like a bloody nose or even congestion, like you might get mucusy, but you're dry because that heat has been running to keep your body warm all night. So the skin gets rough and dry and the air element gets dry. Well, what happens is then we get, you know, exposed to more germs in the fall and winter. Um, but there's something that's really interesting that happens with our digestive fire. So our body, um, you know, incre we, we have heat in the body. So we have a, a metabolic temperature and our body moves that heat from the exterior and moves it into the interior. So it moves it into, um, you know, the digestive tract. And so the body itself gets cold, but the heat is in the digestive tract. From an integrative health perspective, there's something interesting that really ha that happens within the body. And this is scientifically proven. This isn't, um, you know, like Eastern uh, medicine, but I wanted to read this to you all and then I'm gonna explain what it means. So, it's really important for metabolism because as we leave the, su the summer and the fall, in our bodies, there's a metabolic shift that happens. So our body has a master fuel sensor in our cells during the summer months, and it's called mTOR, which stands for mammalian target or rapamycin. mTOR facilitates protein synthesis and growth while inhibiting the internal recycling or, or of used or damaged cells. Things grow in the summer times because there is more food and more light. Winter until about 300 years ago used to be a time of caloric restriction when resources stored from the summer and fall were consumed with great efficiency to ensure survival. The master fuel um, sensor in the winter is AMP, activated protein kinase called AMPK, which optimizes energy efficiency and stimulates the recycling of cellular materials this cycle also occurs to a lesser extent each night and during fasting. The pathways activated by AMPK support cellular regeneration are also anti-inflammatory because they work to break down damaged proteins, lipid, lipids, lichens, RNA, and DNA. So basically we were designed to build muscle and fat in the summer. And so we were anabolic and our bodies were designed to be catabolic in the winter, which is to break down body mass. So again, if you think about our ancestors, our ancestors didn't live in a time where there was um, so much food. So what we're doing in modern American culture is the opposite of what our body did in the past. So um, during the winter season and during the holidays, what we see is an increase of caloric intake when in fact 300 plus years ago, there was actually, we were in a catabolic time frame where our body broke down fat and muscle. And so we're really working against ourselves in the fall and winter. So as we get, you know, exposed to the holiday, um, you know, Yule log and the turkey and the alcohol and the chocolate and all the things that we're exposed to in the winter, we get a caloric in up upcrease and really historically and you know, and from a scientific cellular, biocellular level, we, we were supposed to be catabolic at this time of year. Um, and so that's where I think the conversation gets really interesting and where I know Stephanie's probably thinking, well, wait a minute, in Bata season, we are supposed to be, you know, increasing all of these, you know, nourishing, nutritive foods. And yet this is saying that uh, we're supposed to be catabolic. Well, Ayurveda knew that. Ayurveda knew that we were in a catabolic state in a catabolic time of the year, but the, it was, certainly wasn't telling us to drink lots of alcohol and to eat a lot of sweet 
artificial processed foods, which we do today. So there's, um, there's this interesting um, thing that also happens this time of year is we are in vata season, which is when our bodies are catabolic, and yet kapha season's right around the corner. Well, kapha season is, um, you know, a time of the year where we want to eat bitter and astringent foods, and yet we're at this time where we're eating nutritive foods. Well, Ayurveda also understood that because as we eat these nutritive foods, then, you know, nature gave us spices to use to increase our digestive fire in the winter. So we're kind of balancing, uh, it's like a balancing a tightrope is how I would like to describe this time of year, where we need these deeply nourishing foods. At the same time, we wanna keep our digestive fire high um, so that we don't get sick and so that we, you know, don't have extra toxicity, we don't have lymphatic congestion in our body. So how do we overcome this time of the year? We do want to eat the nutritive foods, which means like sweet potatoes, squash, beets, parsnips, all of the things that are available. Like we didn't have all of the bounty of fruits and we didn't have the bounty of even the bitter. Like if you are in a CSA, you know right now that the CSA ended. There's no winter harvest. It doesn't exist. So in the past, that's why they ate sour. They ate, they ate fermented foods. Well, what, is ferment, what do fermented foods do? They increase your digestive fire. So back, you know, if you go, like I went to Russia in February years ago and I was so shocked because like everything they ate was like pickled and fermented. So right now is the time where you would eat your kimchi molly and you would have sauerkraut and anything pickled and fermented. Beets. Yeah. yeah, and even if you're gonna have dairy, then you would want to have like, you know, yogurt, it's got the sour taste. So the yeah. beauty of the sour taste is that it increases our digestive fire. So this is um, a taste that we wanna incorporate. Ayurveda also talked about two other tastes, which I talked about in our fall cleanse, which was, you know, sweet and salty. Well, sweet didn't mean um, dessert. Sweet meant parsnips, squash, zucchini um but the potato really, like at this time of the year they would gather up the potatoes and whatever root vegetables and they would store them right they would put them underground or in their basement and keep them you know stored as long as they could and and if you if you go to eastern europe in the winter like they're eating um borscht soup so they were eating mm -hmm. and potatoes so these are things that we can eat this time of year for the sweet taste um and then I've also talked about salty. Well, in the past, like think about Europe, like what did they do with their sausages and their meats? They, to preserve the meat, they used salt. It was a preservative. And sugar is also preservative, but it's been used to the max in American culture. So what I'm saying is, is we know these things are loud. However, we were given spices. And so this is the time of the year to start incorporating and this, Stephanie will understand this, Molly, because you haven't studied Ayurveda with me. But this is the time to start incorporating kapha spices. So ginger, long pepper, black pepper, uh, paprika, cumin, um, cardamom, clove, cinnamon. All of these kapha spices increase digestive fire. So when you're baking, um, uh, like, for example, I had a meal. It was so good. It was Brussels sprouts, and they used... Um, like cayenne pepper and paprika. So you can take these um, nutritive foods that can be stored easily in the, in the winter and add all of these digestive spices. So ginger can be used you know, at every meal um, to increase our digestive fire. So it's almost like a balancing, um, and I'm, again, I'm saying this to Stephanie because she studied Ayurveda with me, but it's a balancing of vata bringing in kapha spices. And so, there are a, a, a couple gems or secrets to our metabolism um, and a way for us to use the barometer of our digestive fire. So uh, one of the things that Ayurveda teaches is that we break up what we're eating into quarters. And so when you eat a meal, you want two quarters of, the, of your plate to be food. You want one quarter to be water and one quarter of what you would have in your stomach would be air. So if you took a blender like a Vitamix and you put in, you know, things into that Vitamix, it would not work unless you added some form of water. It would be so compacted, right, that if you started to turn the blender on, 
the blender couldn't work because it would need water. So think like if you were to put in a cup, then you would, let's just say it's the size of a cup, you'd have uh, two quarters be food, one quarter be water, and just imagine that one quarter would be space. Well, that's what you want to think about your stomach when you eat, right? You don't want to be eat to complete fullness. So that's what we do during the holidays. We eat to complete fullness, and then we, we go above complete fullness. And so there is no air left in the digestive system. Well, that's when our digestive fire goes down, and that's when our metabolism decreases. So there's a little secret that I have, and I was taught to this in Ayurveda, and it, I've it's, it's very subtle and you may not notice it in your own body, but start to take um, some awareness and I swear you'll find it. So when you eat, before your body is um, to that point of where there's a quarter left of air in the gut, there will be a little bubble of air that will come up. It's not like you bur belched out loud, but it will be a, a bubble of air. And then when it gets to just above fullness, there'll be a second bubble of air. If you eat past that second bubble of air that will come up, you probably don't notice this because it's so subtle, but the next time you eat dinner, have lunch or breakfast, notice if there's like, oh, this little bubble of air, that's your body saying, I'm almost full. And then the second bubble of air means, if you go past this, you, I'm stuffed. And um, it's super subtle, but I swear if you, next time you sit with a meal and you don't have a distraction of a conversation or the TV or on or a phone or anybody, and you just sit by yourself and you don't talk to anyone, you will notice these two bubbles of air come up. And that is the body's way of telling you that if you go past the second bubble of air, you filled the digestive tract all the way up. So I want you to think through the holidays, okay, I'm not going to go past like two quarters food, one quarter water and one quarter air. And I'm going to notice this fullness because when we go past that fullness, that's when our digestive fire goes down. And that's when we, you know, start to feel bloated and full. And, and the other thing that I wanted to talk about on this call is, well, there's a few things I want to say. And Stephanie, again, this will be a refresher for you. But say you've had a holiday weekend and you just had your Christmas dinner and you, you ate leftovers, let's say, let's just say it fell on a week, and I don't know what it falls on this year, but let's say Saturday was Christmas and Sunday you ate leftovers, and then you go to work on Monday. Well, Monday would be a day for detox, and so what you can do on a Monday is you can just drink a liquid diet for an entire day. So you can either do a couple things. You could have a smoothie for breakfast, not cold, but like at room temperature, a smoothie for breakfast, a smoothie for lunch, and then a light like dinner of soup, or you could have like, you know, smoothie for, for lunch and then like um, a brothy soup for, uh, or a smoothie for breakfast, a brothy soup for lunch and dinner so that you're hydrating your body all day. You're dealing with the vata, which is dehydrated. So you're, you're hydrating the colon, you're filling it up for, you know, you're flushing out any toxins, but you're not adding a lot of, like, again, if you think about that blender, if you stick a lot of food, like it already got, let's say Saturday and Sunday, it got a ton of food and it had to blend it up. Now it's like tired and worn out. And then Monday you go and stick more food in it and you have to blend it up. It's like, oh, I'm worn out. I need a break. If you're already making everything pre-digested or blended or liquidy, then the body can say, yay, I get a break. I don't have to work so, so hard. And now you're giving me a chance for my digestive fire to, to, to roar again. And so you can do that um, like on the Monday following, or let's say it fell on, fell on a Wednesday, Thursday, then on Friday, you would do the liquid diet for a whole day. And then you can, you know, go back to normal. So that'll give your digestive fire break, give it time to stabilize itself and get back to, to normal. The other thing that you want to do through the holidays is you want to add a minimum of three and a half to four hours between meals. So you wouldn't want to say, I just had a client where she would wake up and I'll record this call and send it to her and she'll know I'm talking about her. So she, she has a son and she wakes up and she's like, I'm going to drink a juice to get going in the morning. And she would drink her juice at say 630. Then she would take him to school and then she would have breakfast at eight. Well, when we eat three, uh, you know, under three hours or four hours, our digestive fire metabolism doesn't have time to like stoke its fire again. So I, I told her, I said, what you really need to do is merge your two breakfasts into one. So I would rather that you wait until your son goes to school and have your breakfast than to have you eat like almost two breakfasts because she just wanted something to, you know, 
stabilized her until she got him to school, but yet she's bogging down her digestive fire. So snacking through the holidays, like, you know, if you've had lunch and then you go to an early holiday party at say three or four, three o'clock, you, you'd want to wait you'd want to wait till you ate again. You wouldn't want to eat it. Let's say you had a late lunch at two and then you ate at four. You really need a minimum of four hours to stoke your digestive fire. And then at the very least, you've had a holiday meal. You want to give yourself 13 or 14 hour fast before the next meal. So my goal is really to tell you like, give enough time and space between your meals to allow your digestive fire to get stoked again. Because when we don't do that, then we start to put on the holiday pounds and we, you know, we don't feel well. The other thing I wanted to address is like, if you've had a holiday party and you drink, or you've had say a lot of dairy, a lot of um, packaged or processed foods, you want to go 72 hours before you bog your fire down again. So like two holiday parties back to back, of drinking and heavy because a lot of times the holiday parties they have a lot of like cheeses and cheese dips and ranch dips and and Ugh. then you, you eat all this inflammatory food you have to allow the histamine levels in your body to go back down again so you have to give yourself a window of 72 hours for that inflammation to subside in your body before you can do it again so if you're if you give yourself 72 hours if you add in these like fasting type days so it's not where I'm asking you to fast all day and not eat anything, but just giving yourself your body time to ramp up the metabolism before you introduce foods again, um, like heavy, heavy, um, heavy holiday foods. Um, and then ideally, you know, just um, mindfulness. So for me, it's like, I'm trying to think of an example. I'll give you two examples. Like if you know that you're going to go somewhere, go already have, having had something to eat and then just enjoy the party. If that's too hard to do, then you can like not so much worry about being starving and then eating everything in front of you. If that makes sense. That may not work for some people who really love to socialize and be around food. Um, but then the mindfulness piece, like taking a step back and just asking your body what it really wants and what it really needs and what it really craves versus eating mindlessly. Like, oh, this looks good. I, my digestion, my digestive fire isn't really asking for this, um, but I'm, I'm going to eat it anyway. So like I had dinner the other night and I had a heavy, you know, like Thanksgiving and stuff was, was, um, and I had my birthday and then I, I was at Molly's and and then the next night, um, Evan had made some soup and I was like, I'm not really hungry. And so what I chose to do was just drink the broth and not eat the protein because I could feel like I wasn't really hungry. That digestive fire was gone. And so I just removed the meat. The other thing that happens during the holidays that really bogs down our digestive fire is combining two different types of protein. So um, say cheese and beans and meat. Like we only need one, I have a... I have somebody given. We only need one form of protein. So, um, like if you were going to say have beef or pork or turkey, you don't also need cheese or something with beans in it. Just choose one form of protein because when we don't digest all that protein, it turns into sugar in our body. And, um, and then I wrote a few more things down that I wanted to share. Ainsley, I'm on my call, honey. You gotta go in the other room. Yeah, but like when you'd make like um, you said like a liquid day diet. Like, can you make like a pureed pumpkin soup, or is it just broth? Like, just like I mean, is that considered a liquid, or is that a still a solid if it's pureed? Yeah, so that's a good question. So, like, there would be quite a bit of carbs in that, right? So, I would prefer that it be a brothy soup with like a miso soup, something more mm. like a miso soup. So you're getting a little bit of protein, you're getting a little bit of greens, but you don't have a lot of protein, like a ton of protein. You don't have a ton of carbs. You're really hydrating the body. You're just giving it enough to feel nourished, but not starving. Mm, okay. So miso would be like a perfect thing to have. Like, like um, homemade, not from like the 
Yeah, I think of like a lot of like Asian soups, like Thai Asian soups where they have like, you know, some vegetables, maybe just a little bit of noodles, not a ton of noodles, but a, a nice. Oh, okay. Soup. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, so one of the things that Ayurveda teaches is really mindfulness of, around food to really take, um, like to take time <clears throat> to be fully present, like almost like a form of meditation where you're really intentional about what you're eating. And so that really helps during the holidays, this, this intention, because it's so easy to say, go and be around and, and, and be exposed to something that you, you know you really, really like. Um, like my mom makes this chocolate Yule log every year. And it's like, I know I really like this, but does my body really crave <laughs> it? Like, I know I, it's like, it's almost like it's like ritual. Like it's my mom makes the Swiss rolls, yeah. It's like a tradition that your family does it and you see it, but you're like, I do this because I'm so used to it. But if you really ask your body, is it needing or wanting it? It's probably like, not really, right? I'm not really needing or wanting this. But really, but also, you do want really, it. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. It's also important to like really have grace and like, and also realize that this is a time of joy and a time to be, um, just to have fun, but not so much that, that you don't, you bog down your digestive fire. So give yourself some grace, but then say, okay, I'm going to give myself like a 72 hour window to allow all this inflammation in my body to go back down. Um, you know, um, to eat more of a liquid based diet, you know, with something like a miso or brothy soup, you know, add some ginger to it, add a little paprika. As long as you don't have heartburn or indigestion, you can, you can add the black pepper, paprika, cumin, coriander, and these digestive spices to it, um, you know, to stoke your fire again. And then, um, you know, if you feel not so hungry in the morning and you want to fast to lunch and just have uh, some warm ginger tea. Chai is a great one because it has, you, you don't have to get um, caffeinated chai, you can get rubus chai because chai already has um, these digestive spices in them. It's more of a kapha based tea. So you can drink some chai in the morning um, and use that to get your digestive fire and maybe add a little ginger to your chai and skip the milk. Or if you wanted to have milk, don't have a full fat milk, you know, just have maybe a little almond milk to it. Mm -hmm. But they're just the for takeaways I really want you to get is for sweets, try to focus on those root vegetables, then use these digestive spices that I mentioned, give yourself a good window of four hours between breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no snacking during the holidays at all like cut out snacking, uh, give yourself a 72 hour window before you increase inflammation in your body. If you can go the whole week before you have another holiday event, then even better. Um, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. What's your favorite sugar substitute? Um, so stevia and monk fruit. Monk fruit um, is monk, natural. Monk fruit? monk fruit m-o-n-k fruit f-r-u-i-t okay. they're both really sweet so you don't need a lot of monk fruit it's really really sweet so very little monk fruit like will um will add a lot of sweet um sweetness to anything that you make it's almost like i think you cut monk fruit so if you were to use like a tablespoon of sugar you, i think you use like a quarter for monk fruit it's that sweet you like it it's all natural yeah and the reason it was called monk fruit is monks used it as sweetener and okay, it, and it was considered sattvic or like very good for the body, and so that's why it's called monk fruit because it was used by monks. Okay, because um, I was at the store the other day and I was like, oh, I don't know, I need to ask Paige what to get in here. I hate the taste of artificial sweetener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stevia, um, like again, it. it's like super sweet, but I get the stevia that's in liquid form, and I drop it in the kids hardly ever know that it's, they hardly ever know that it's um, um, artificial sweetener. You get it at Whole Foods? Yeah, you can get it at Whole Foods. In liquid so, form? Mm -hmm, liquid form, yeah. You can get it, it like a sugar form or liquid form. I like it in the liquid form. Um, okay. Hold on a second. I'm going to mute my child and make her leave. I don't want 
<laughs> it's not supposed to be up here. <laughs> um, yeah, and then like if you have a sweet thing that you want to make, um, baked apples is my favorite like this time of year and then add uh, cinnamon and clove and nutmeg and then add some ghee and you, you can well you can bake baked apples with those or you can just put it and saute it on the pan and it already has a sweet taste to it yeah um, and that that like is satisfying for me for a sugar craving and then I really really do it's it's considered vodka increasing but I love dark dark chocolate um, yeah so I eat it 80 percent plus but I try to keep it down to one, one slice because for me, if I eat too much, then I can't sleep at night. So I have to eat it before one, one o'clock. And um, the other one that was really, I've, uh, there's two things. I, I was telling Stephanie to listen to this anxiety summit. And, um, and so if you are going to have alcohol through the holidays, it's really good to do bitters. Um, so bitters will help increase your digestive fire. Um, because they aid the liver and the gallbladder, and then that will help increase the digestive enzymes in our in our stomach. So if you are going to have a drink like Campari, is as in a second Campari. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you if you wanted to have like a a post dinner drink to help aid digestion, then if if yeah. you're going to do alcohol, then the bitters or the Campari or anything really bitter is going to help increase your digestive fire. Versus like lots of wine or champagne. What's that licorice one that they put the coffee beans in? It tastes like black licorice. The other great holiday I drink is you can add a little elderberry, you know, and add some digestive bitters. Um, you know, then there's also tonic. It's called, um, what is that brand that's low in sugar? It's... Um, there's a tonic that's really low in sugar that you can add the Campari or the bitters. And so I like to do that if I'm going to have a drink, just like one drink to get the digestive bitters to aid digestion and then, you know, end it at that one drink and not have a lot of sugar, sugar with it because then the, the liver is going to be, have a harder time digesting the alcohol and the sugar. But if you get a nice, you know, if you get nice bitters, um, some elderberry to help with the immune system and um you know and then not drink a lot of cold drinks so the other thing ayurveda teaches in the fall and winter is you stay totally away from ice water or cold drinks so again with your smoothie in the morning you can add ginger like a lot of people are like well i don't really crave a cold smoothie or smoothie in the winter well then take a vanilla protein powder put ginger clove nutmeg and cinnamon and you can make it more holiday warming and enjoyable um, and for me like again to get a bitter in my morning smoothie and I was giving a client this tip the other day is to take a little green matcha and put it in your in your smoothie and then with vanilla and then you can um, you know you can make it with ginger that way too when you say ginger do you mean like raw ginger yeah, there's ginger spice. So if you were, um, yeah, but if for a smoothie, I'd just take like, um, you know, like about an, a half an inch of, because it depends on how much you can tolerate. But like, um, you know, a half an inch of ginger, I just get the skin off and cut it and then throw it in the blender. Okay. Um, but again, the bitters, the bitters are not considered very good in the vata season. However, they do help get the digestive fire up especially if you have pitta dosha in you, which is good for both of you all. Because Molly, you have a lot of pitta. I have what? A lot of pitta. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't done an Ayurvedic assessment with me. Vata? Yeah. Your mom has a lot of vata. I've got a lot of something. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, do you have any other questions? Anything that you're thinking that you might like during the holidays? Juniper <laughs> deal. Mm -hmm. She's done. <laughs> Sorry. You Thanks. know what you're going to eat for the holidays, Molly? Mm -hmm. Well, I love Brussels sprouts. 
So you that's good. You could add some ginger and spice to those. Yep. And I love chili, but I guess I don't need to add turkey beans. if beans there's going to be beans in it. You could try just the turkey without the beans. Yeah. And I guess I should get some more sweet potatoes and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then with the, again, with the sweet potatoes, you can add the nutmeg and the cinnamon, and that will increase your metabolism. Yeah, I mean, I even add cinnamon to my chili because I think it tastes mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, and I do, like, sometimes I'll take a whole apple in the morning and I'll put that in my blender with um vanilla cinnamon nutmeg and i'll put like dried up oatmeal or dried up oats in it and it tastes like a apple crumble mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sassy <laughs> with like flax seeds and you know some of that stuff some protein and maybe some greek yogurt so again like you wouldn't need if you have the flax seeds you wouldn't need the greek yogurt this is where like the two proteins together makes it harder for your digestive fire to break down. So the gut's like, oh my gosh, I have all this protein to break down. I don't, you, you oh, can really? get of protein. Yeah. It makes, um, like if you look at food combining, not just Ayurveda, but food combining two proteins together, um, which a lot of our American diet has like, right, like chili and quesadillas and a lot of Mexican food is like two proteins. But if you look, I, I don't, I'm not trying to say this demographically. It's not because I'm recording this call. But, you know, um, in our culture, a lot of, you know, combined proteins, it's hard for our body to, to, to assimilate that much because when protein is not broken down, it turns to sugar. Okay. So our body, like, you know, I mean, especially for the, to the, for the paleo community, paleo works when you're what I call pagan, which is paleo vegan, where you eat majority plant-based and then you just use protein as more of a supplement so the majority of your food is plant-based and the protein is um you know is no so i tell people to protein you want to eat no no more than your fist in protein and in, in the meal really in ayurveda we're not supposed to eat more than two fistful so that's another thing to think about during the holiday season if on my plate is more than my own two fists, then I've overeaten for my body. So in Ayurveda, we're not supposed to eat more than two fistful. So the same thing with meat. We don't want to eat more than really a fistful of, of, of in a day. So in our, in our American culture, people who eat just a paleo diet that's high, high, high in protein, it's hard over time to not gain weight because our body's turning that into sugar. So ideally you want to eat, um, I tell people to One eat the protein. majority of their plate and plants, and then you almost treat the protein as a garnish, which is the opposite. In American culture, like the protein is the main meal and then the fruit, the vegetables are the garnish, but we need to do it the opposite direction. As long as you use enough good fats, the vegetables will fill you up. I think that the, the misnomers people think, well, I can't have enough fat so they don't feel full or the, the vegetables aren't, they don't feel satiated by vegetables because they're not using good fats to really make the vegetables um, palatable. Mm. So too, during the holidays, like think, okay, or like, you know, your smoothie, think, okay, I want a little protein in here, but, um, you know, but you already, like, if you're using a nut milk, that's a form of protein. So you don't need to well. add that would be three things because it would be flax, the whey, the protein, and then the yogurt. Yeah. So, see, you don't even need the yogurt. And yogurt's inflammatory. You know? It's going to make me inflamed. Mm hmm So, you can cut out the yogurt. Will it still taste good? And even oatmeal has... Um, what if it do doesn't taste very good? Without the yogurt? Because you're wanting a little sweet taste? Then add a little stevia. Make it creamy. Oh, you want it creamy to thicken it. You can use an avocado to thicken it, but that's kind of out of season. You could or use, a banana. 
Yeah, you could, but well, bananas uh, considered the sweet taste. Yeah, avocado, it's not really considered in season right now. Um, I don't have that feeling that I need mine to be creamy. I'm trying to think what you could add. I mean, you could if you had leftover sweet potato add. I don't know if that. Ew. Yeah. Ooh. I just don't really care. <laughs> so, well, what would you, what's your smoothie like in the morning? <laughs> Mine is, I use my plant-based protein powder. She knows I use equilibrium. So, I mean, if you are interested, you can go to my website and get equilibrium. I use two scoops of equilibrium. I use almond milk. I take a scoop of collagen powder and I take a, a, a fruit and vegetable blend and I add that. And, um, and then I blend all that up together. I don't add a lot of, this time of year, I don't add any fruit really. This morning, Marsha wanted a banana, so I, I made it for him, and then I added my extras after I made it for him, because he won't eat the collagen or the plant-based protein or plant powder. I have a fruit and vegetable blend that I use that gives me all my fruit and vegetables for a day in my smoothie, but it's not, it's, it's not like a dessert. It's very, you know. What is it? Is it actual fruit and vegetables? It's a powder. I'll send it to you. Mm. Do you like the way it tastes? Um, I'm used to it. It doesn't bother me. Would collagen make it thicker, Paige? It does. The col and it has no flavor. So I use the collagen. Uh, yeah. Again, Molly, this is the time of life. Um, Stephanie's younger than we are, but the collagen's really good for our good skin. For skin. Helps, with yeah. Helps with our bones and our joints. Um, so we're at the time of life where it's really important to get collagen in. Mm hmm okay. But I don't have a real, it, well, I think it's pretty thick. I mean, it's not, yeah, it, by the time I add all that in, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it creamy, but it's thick. I'll send you what I do, so you know. Okay. And then, yeah, so if I want a vanilla and I want it, more holiday like then I will add cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and ginger. Um, and I do do that. And I've even added, I know we were talking about, but I've added the pumpkin and you know the the pump the pureed pumpkin. Mm -hmm. uh, From the can. Creamy, you can add pumpkin. That will make it creamy. I do that too. There's actually those cans of pumpkin my brother was telling me. There's actually, there's no pumpkin in those cans of pumpkin. I don't know. Look at the back. It will say, it will say 100% pure pumpkin, but there's no pumpkin in it. I don't know where he's buying it. I have to look. I, I get mine. At Just look at the back because I think it's all sweet potatoes. Actually, pumpkin doesn't taste good in pie. So then that's what I said. Sweet so they put potato. sweet potatoes in it. Well, there you go, sweet potato. Not there meant. you go. Just look. I mean, that we were talking about it over Thanksgiving. Yeah, but I just mentioned sweet potato and you said, yeah, it's actually good in a smoothie. Yeah. If that's yeah. what I'm eating. We've been actually eating sweet potato pies all Thanksgiving. Yeah. Stephanie, do you know what you're going to have? Um, not yet. Um, we like a lot of root vegetables. Um, so something like that. And usually we have some type of meat when we go to my parents. Yeah. So whatever people prefer that year. Yeah, I'm gonna, well, on Christmas day, I'm gonna make a soup and I haven't figured it out, but um, Evan and I are really into like the, like I said, a lot of Asian soups because they do have a lot of ginger and spices already in them. So he made a, he made a, a Asian ginger soup with, um, we just had it with um, mushrooms and ginger. It had watercress in it. It was so delicious. I'll, I'll get the recipe and share it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that because I always feel, even with as much as we've pared it down over the last two or three years, I feel like it's still too much. Like, I, I'm not really, if you think about it, like what we just talked about, my, my, unless I've been really active outside in the cold, my digestive fire is not that strong. And it might be different, Molly, because you're walking around in New York a lot. Yeah. But I'm not starving really. And so I don't feel the need to have, you know, all of the accoutrement for, for Christmas. I haven't been starving either, really. It just finally snowed today. First time. 
And that quote that I read is out of the bioregulatory medicine book. I don't know, you were walking around, I don't think you heard it, um, but it's interesting because the next part of the book talks about how each of our organs have something called a per peripheral oscillators in each organ, which basically means that, um, well, I'll read it. It's not surprising that what TCM has known for thousands of years is now being verified by modern research. Studies have affirmed that more than 10% of expressed genes in all organs exhibit a circadian oscillation, which means that our body has a timing system for each organ to do its job. And Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine have an Ayurveda clock and a, and a traditional Chinese medicine clock when each organ in the body. So if you wake up between the hours of one and three, your, your liver's congested. And if you wake up between two and four, more closer to four, it's in your lower digestive tract. Your, your colon is, is, um, is uh, over, overburdened, meaning you, you have too much digestion in your colon. The colon is so long that take, this is a really good example of how long digestion. So really we should eat something. It should be totally eliminated within 24 hours. But somebody could have beets and notice that it doesn't come out for two or three days and then the color's red because that's how much is stuck within the colon. That's how long it took the colon to do its job. So from the time that food enters our body, it should be fully eliminated within 24 hours, which again, a lot of people don't have a, a, a daily. So a good indicator through the holidays of your digestive fires that you're Eat having- some beets that you're having a, a morning bowel movement. No, <laughs> that you're having a morning bowel movement right away. Well, that's how you can tell how fast you're getting rid of it. Yeah, yeah. So if that's not happening, then you know your digestive fire is really bogged down. You can give it a beat test. Eat it and see if, you know, during the holidays, if it's, that's a test because it comes out the color, you know it's come out. Um, so yeah, um, I hope this has been helpful. Thank and, you, Paige. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I've recorded it, so I will, um, I'll probably put it up on the YouTube channel that I have and then share it back out. And I'm, hopefully I can find Leanne's email um, and get it to her. I feel bad she didn't get back on. All right, thank you for joining. Oh, thank you, Paige. I love you. Have a great yeah. evening. Nice meeting you, Stephanie. Nice to meet you too. Have a good night. You too, Bye. take care.